The number of formal jobs in the economy shrank in the first three months of this year. Statistics South Africa released its quarterly employment statistics this morning. And that focuses on jobs created in various sectors of the formal economy. Now that's different from the Labour Force survey that focuses on the number of unemployed South Africans. Joining me now to speak about uh, this and the outlook thereof is Sinisha Pakrasamy, who's an economist at Momentum. Thank you very much uh, for your time this afternoon, Sinisha. Uh, I suppose one of the big things to consider here is is that not only are we seeing a decline quarter on quarter, but on an annual basis, we did see a decline as well. And it looks like more and more companies are just opting for part-time uh, employment opportunities as opposed to full-time. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, unfortunately, we saw quite a large drop of about 97,000 workers on a year-on-year -year basis, which seems quite alarming. Um, a quite a big drop also came through from your community services and government sector, which, of course, then includes your expanded public works program, as well as the Presidential Youth Employment Initiative. So the data can slightly be skewed by those part-time workers. But I think, as you mentioned, the fact that you know South Africa in general, South Africa Inc. is more willing to hire on a part-time basis than a full-time basis, then does tell us quite a lot about the state of the economy right now. And as we know, South Africa is barely growing this year. Mm. Does it not concern you that we also saw quite a significant drop, as you say, um, in uh, public works, uh, jobs opportunities, but also in other departments within government? Because a lot of companies, Sanisha, like uh, PPC and the like, are waiting for big projects to be funded by government, whether it be construction or whatever it may be. And if they cannot keep people employed, surely they're not going to be spending a lot on big economic driving projects. Projects. Indeed, I think there is quite a you know a strong sort of golden thread running through construction work with um, actual fixed investment numbers. And what we're seeing here, the construction sector was one of the sectors that didn't actually receive very big uh, growth in earnings, because that's another thing that the quarterly employment statistics publication also captures, is just the movement in gross earnings. That was one of the sectors that was actually uh, showing quite a weak nominal wage growth over a year-on-year -year period. But we've also seen in terms of fixed investment trends right now in the economy, it's largely coming through on your renewables projects, but there's quite a bit of weakness elsewhere. And I I think that's really, again, testament to a weak economy with businesses a bit more reluctant to expand operations in an environment where the demand is not really that strong. So we are seeing um, the, uh, there were losses across major sectors uh, in this particular quarter, Sanisha, but when you look at it in a medium to long term outlook, are there any low hanging fruit in terms of sectors that could potentially start to absorb? I mean, we've seen a stabilization of the power cuts for about two weeks now. I don't want us to get too excited, but in the medium to long term, are there some low hanging fruit in terms of sectors that may be able to recover enough to start absorbing? I think broadly speaking, South African businesses are dampening fixed investment and employment prospects right now because they are quite concerned about policy uncertainty and the political environment in general. I think this is one of the factors that we can try and resolve for in order to get the economy pumping again and in order to promote jobs growth. If we look a little bit more in detail, specifically there are structural reforms, as you mentioned, in the energy space, but as well as in the logistics and transport space that need to come through in order to foster higher levels of confidence that will then urge businesses to start hiring more and to expand operations in South Africa. Yeah, and uh, well, how do we expect the inflationary trajectory uh, that has been expressed by the Saab uh, and other parts of the world, Europe being the very latest to say they don't feel comfortable that they've curbed inflation enough, is that going to have a direct impact on what we're seeing when it comes to trends around employment? I think there's a direct link coming through for the consumer. And uh, if we look at the consumer market in general, I think we are looking at quite a bifurcated market right now. So your lower end consumer is really the, the consumer that's facing quite a, a bleak employment outlook. Um, the sort of sister survey that comes through from Statistics South Africa on employment is the quarterly labor force survey. 
And data from that survey indicates that your semi-skilled and your unskilled workers are still down in terms of employment levels since the pandemic. For your semi-skilled workers, we are down about 302,000 workers. And for your unskilled workers, we are down about 188,000 workers. So your lower income earner is facing bleak employment prospects. They are the ones that are usually exposed to your unsecured credit. And over the last six months, your bottom 30% of spenders in South Africa have faced an average inflation rate of about 9.9 percent. On the other hand, you've got your upper end consumer that tends to face more asset-backed credit, a bit more job security, and they've faced inflation rates of a bit lower, just under 7%. So that's a 3% inflation gap that we are talking about. And that has, of course, limited the ability for your lower income earner to spend. And I think that's really coming through in consumption patterns and expenditure patterns in South Africa. And that's really the direct link from your inflation into your real wage growth, which has been dampened, and how that actually comes about in terms of consumer spending facing quite a lot of pressure in South Africa. Thank you very much for those insights. That's Sunisha Patrasami joining us. Uh, momentum economist are breaking down uh, the jobs data that came out employment statistics quarterly employment statistics are uh, not a pretty picture that's being painted there and it doesn't look like the outlook is going to be very rosy very soon on